was talking to somebody today, and I believe in the importance of having quiet confidence. And it's not about a level of arrogance or letting the world know how awesome you are and things like that. It's having a sense of self-awareness that, of knowing that even though to the world, and I can only speak for myself in this case, that I may think differently than many people that function in society normally have, that it it doesn't make me less of a person. It doesn't make me less valuable. And when you realize that the way you think is not better or worse, it's just different than the next person, then you are able to function much better. Because I think what happens in a lot of people's lives and journeys is that when they are confronted with situations in their lives that necessarily don't align with their value system and the way they want to live and knowing that their value system may not be normally accepted by society but that person that they're conflicting with their values are more in line with what everyone else thinks then you are in a way put in a pickle and then you're having to acquiesce you're having to accept that term and hoping that somehow you're able something good to come out of it right and a lot of times in my experiences what's happened with making those decisions knowing that intrinsically they never sat with me well it wasn't something that i wanted to go through because i know deep inside that wasn't who i was that wasn't what i wanted to experience but i did it because i loved the other person i wanted to see the other person happy it always cost me a lot of resentment a lot of negative emotions and feelings So I think when I talk to people along the way and I was having this conversation with somebody today because I I've been gifted through my challenges of having to figure things out on my own. I never wanted to be a person that couldn't rely on a support system or have a support system there for me when times are going tough. I I never had that. And it wasn't by choice. It was more of the fact that I was a man and in the immediate family dynamic that I was in, there wasn't enough support there. And there wasn't enough of a safe space to be allowed to express myself without judgment or without any negative experiences being brought on. And in addition to that, being a man in the world. So the circle of friends and support groups that, were there the one thing they couldn't provide was emotional comfort they couldn't do that for me so like for example like with women i think that's one of the beautiful things about it is that single women let's just say single moms in this case there is a support group for other women like women when it comes to parenting and i saw this as dad early on they really have a cult they really help out one another there's a level of trust of women within one another to help each other out and and being emotionally available for each other. Whereas men, you don't have that same level of support. Don't get me wrong. If I was to lose my job, I could find other men. Uh, men in my support group will definitely get the word out, will definitely help me out. They'll definitely give me cash if I needed it. If I needed something along those lines, but when it comes to the emotional support because of a breakdown I had in life, let's say about divorce, or just challenges that we have the genders are different in the type of support they're able to bring so when you realize that when you understand that reality that hey the support group that you receive or or the level of support is going to be different from one group versus the other and you know that you can't receive that from this group and you kind of and end up being venturing on your own and i think what i realized was that um when when you have that journey to go on your own you all the answers are from within right like all the answers that we have in life that we want to experience that they're they're all found from within that's what i found the hard way that any question that i had about life for the most part about my journey about my challenges if i sat enough in isolation i was able to figure it out i was able to talk myself through these things I was able to, because I was able to have a perspective of logic, removing feelings aside from something I was experiencing, like the way I would do it for myself would be, okay, Mano, 
if if this was your friend, meaning that you were not emotionally invested in this scenario, what would you tell your friend in this case? But in reality, that advice was for myself. So that's the part that many of us are not able to do is that we're not able to remove our the, the triggering emotions that we have for our scenarios in place. I guess, you know, like for relationships, for example, we know many people that are in toxic relationships that have no business being in it. We both, everyone knows from the outside that they have no business being together. But guess what? That emotional connection, it doesn't allow them to remove themselves because emotionally there's something that they're invested in that they don't want to lose. And and you see that all the time. You see that, I see that also with broke people. Like when people are broke and they're not able to maintain the bills that of the lifestyle they're currently living their pride they're not able to let that go you can't be broke and proud at the same time and you have to be able to say look i'm not making the money to sustain this lifestyle i have to move on it hurts it hurts my ego it it hurts my my self-esteem but I have to be realistic and know that I cannot continue going on this path. And you have to eat crow. I've done it so many times. I can give so many examples in my life of that. Where I've had to do both. Where I came to a relationship, I had to step outside of that relationship and say, okay, what's good? What's the reality of the situation? What are we seeing here? And especially, let's just say in the financial, like you just talked about, when your ego and pride are involved, remove your ego, remove your self-esteem, remove your pride. What would you tell somebody? And when you look at life that way, you're able to have all the solutions and answers you need. But again, it's a very hard thing. And I know for a lot of people, they always question me, how did you come to this point? Who gave you this advice? And unfortunately, a lot of it was myself. You know, before all these motivational clips come out now and and all these different speakers that motivate people and teach us about how to view life, I didn't have any of that. And I had to figure it out through the process I just explained because when you don't have the support system, and many of us are lucky to have that. So when you don't have that support, it, it's it's like you're put in a position of, okay, what do I do? How do I figure this out? Some people are not able to understand that. So whenever the beautiful thing about life now at this stage is that I run into people that have those same type of challenges that are stuck between a rock and a hard place. And they're really trying to figure out the feelings that they're going through and how to figure it out. And and the gift for me, I think part of my legacy on this earth is that because I was able to go through the challenges I did now, when I run into people along the way that have those challenges that have those difficulties because they have never experienced that conflict emotionally in their life and people around them can't understand how they feel what they're going through how they want to really live it's a very hard thing and i know that i was put on this earth part of it to share my experiences with those that i come in contact with Some of them take advantage of it. Some of them don't. And because I think ultimately the way I think is so unconventional. And I just say unconventional, not in a negative way, but just knowing that I have the answers if I take my time and view things from a realistic perspective. If I remove my emotions and myself out of it, what would I say to that person that's going through the exact same thing that I'm going through? But unfortunately, like I said, a lot of people, when emotions are involved and history is involved with people and situations, it's hard to look at things objectively. It, and I understand that because even myself, I've fallen down that path. It's like when you are emotionally invested or want a desirable outcome to occur, but you see that it's evident that you're having challenges that are not giving you any confidence in that outcome from occurring you you realize that you have to find an answer but a lot of people what i found in my talks like this that i have with people along the way is that 
some of them they don't want to hear your advice per se because they already have the answer is that they're trying to find a solution to the problem and i and i realized that at times i realized that when some people are talking to me and you give them the advice and they don't follow up with it it's like you realize very quickly that they're not trying to get your advice they're, they're just trying to help, have you help them figure out how to unlock this problem because they know the answer they know what they're supposed to do but they don't want to do it <laughs> you know and and i understand that because as humans we invest in others emotionally and and we give so much of our time and we sacrifice so much of ourselves for others and for the for, to be connected to other people. And what, what I always tell people is that we are variables that we can't control. Meaning human beings, the way we think, the way we act, how we live our lives are variables that I can't control. I can't control my neighbor and how they live their life and how they think. I can't control my friend as far as what decisions he wants to make for his or her life. I can't do that. So the quicker you can understand that the or, and grasp that reality, that's where a lot of the way I function in life comes from. In relationships, for example, like I'm not a jealous guy per se. I, I think that's something that's notorious with my Yelp reviews from the relationships I've been in, that I'm not a jealous guy. I don't worry about how late you stay out. I don't worry about who you're with or who you're hanging out or what you're doing. I'm not saying that it doesn't cause any strings to be played or touched, but I always go back to the trust factor. I always go back to when I'm in, whenever I'm in a relationship, I always go back to the saying, trust the bond. I, I put in, we've both put in enough work to trust each other to make this commitment to one another and to know that through the journey of life, we still got each other's back. No matter what other feelings arise, no matter what other needs and wants may come up during the journey, that at the end, we trust the bond and we trust each other for us to maintain the bond as it is. It may even put more decorations on it. We may add more ribbons to it, but at the end, that fabric is still the same. If anything, we're adding more layers of strength. But a lot of people, unfortunately, when it comes to life and they're because of their trauma, because of their past experiences, they're not able to they're not able to let that go. And, and it's understandable, you know, and that's that's why I operate so much different than most of my counterparts in friend circles and society and friendships and families, because first of all, I've never had the support system, so I had to figure out a lot of the answers on my own and and work through that on my own. That's why I love my isolation time. That's why I love whenever problems arise, I need my time to myself. And secondly is understanding that I trust the bond unless until you give me reason not to trust anymore. So going back to the relationship dynamic that I'm talking about trusting the bond is that I'm not going to have you be hung for the sins of the partners of my past. I'm going to give you a clean slate for sure. As a friend, as a partner, as a new person in my life, I'm going to give you a clean slate. The moment you show me that you can't be trusted or that you don't hold that bond to the same level or with the same strength that I do, that's when I check out. That's when I say, okay, when you're sitting there and you say, you know, we're going to talk openly and we're going to go ahead and communicate and be each other's rocks. And, and you, as time goes along, you start taking the things I say to you in confidence and using them against me. And you start judging me negatively on those things then I don't want to move forward with you because that's not what was the intention of these conversations. It wasn't to be judged. I let the world judge me outside the home. The world judges me enough. So I don't need that in my own household. I don't need that in my own circle. I need people in my life that are understanding that, okay, I don't tick like you. I don't want to tick like you, but 
I am still a person of quality and I'm a person that will be here for you as a support system in any way, shape or form. I may not operate a mover or have the same philosophies as you, but ultimately it, I'll be there for you. And I think that those things I talked about, the power of having self-confidence comes from those mindsets of, of understanding that people are variables we can't control and that we have all the answers from within. And if you are a, if you're ever stuck in a situation where you're between a rock and a hard place and you don't have anybody to talk to, just know that you can talk these things out with yourself. Because if you were to have your twin, your twin sister, twin brother in front of you that was going through this thing, what would you tell them? How would you tell them to be? And that's your answer. Now, it takes courage to apply that answer. Knowledge is power, but applying knowledge is even more power. That's where the true power lays at. To really execute that and understand that there's going to be pain. Understand that there's going to be some unwarranted feelings that may be harboring for a while. And you also have to understand that when you're dealing with other people, we're variables we can't control. And all you can do is give them that rope of trust to hold on to and hoping that they are positive with it and they put in the same effort that you put into maintaining it, to maintaining that rope of bond. And I, but that's easier said than done because unfortunately what happens is that our lives and all of us, like we deal with past trauma and unfortunately, the, the sins of our past impact the people in the future. Even though that person in, in your current time or anybody that's coming into your life in the future is a totally different person. So that's why I always say, like, I'm always going to give you a clean slate until you show me otherwise. But then what happens a lot of times is that people tend to repeat behaviors from people in the past. And that's where I'm more or less to give leeway once that trust is broken. So I quiet confidence going in there, knowing who I am, not letting the world dictate who I am as a person, how I need to be. All I know is that when I'm in work, I, I, I definitely conform to the confines that are needed for me to function in that culture, in that environment. But outside of that, I, I, I don't need to be... I guess, conforming to anybody else in life. And that's where I get the Minnows from Mars thing because that's what my friend told me to call the podcast years ago. He said, look, it's Minnows from Mars. That's perfect. That's you. Because that's how I think. I don't, it's not that I'm, I'm a weirdo. It's just more that I, I trust my instinct and I live in a way where I want to be happy and not compromising on that because I am handling responsibilities, because I am a responsible person in society. So if my views are aligned with yours, that's fine. But that doesn't mean I'm a bad person. That doesn't mean that I, I can't be your friend. It doesn't mean that I can't be there for you. And I, and I think that's the sad thing about our, our society at this stage is that people want us to align exactly to how they feel instead of saying, okay, he has his opinions or she has her opinions and her values. Or not having the trust in the bond. If you're in a relationship dynamic to know that, okay, you know, changes are going to happen. I always think, I always say that to people as well. The variable of change is always going to be in all of us because we're always growing as people. We're always uh, evaluating ourselves. Some people don't. Some people are happy where they're at. And then there's people that are always dynamic, that are always pushing, that are always wanting to find out what's the next step in their chapter how am i going to get better from this how am i gonna what other things do i want to achieve on this earth while i'm breathing while i'm walking while i'm able to be functional and those are those are very deep thoughts that many people are so afraid to dive into in their own abyss because the fear of judgment the, the, the fear of self-hate. There, there's so much going on inside of us that 
we want to sweep under the bed and not see. But what happens is when you sweep it under the bed, it's still a pile under there. And then eventually it becomes a gremlin. It becomes a little ogre that lives underneath the bed. And then it rears its ugly head once in a while. And then you don't realize how it got there. And we don't care how it got there. We just keep pushing it down. So it doesn't scare other people. So it doesn't get in the way of of the persona that we're giving out in the world. Because for many of us, we're so worried about what other people think of us. We're always looking for confirmation and acceptance from the people's closest to us. And I always tell people, I always say, hey, man, I hear you. But you can't live life trying to appease other people that are necessarily not looking out for your best interest. You're just appeasing their ego. You're appeasing their value system. That's all you're doing. When you decide to not live the life that is truthful to you because you want to appease your family, you want to appease your friends, you want to appease your social circles, your co-workers, whatever it is, it's it's a it's a a self-imposed prison it really is because now you're conforming to how you want other people like for some people being part of a community is more important than their own self-happiness and what i try to tell people is that you're going to be alone for a while when you're realizing that the things that you want to uphold in your life are different or don't align with the people closest to you that you love and they would never be able to see it as a positive you have to understand that reality that the dynamic is going to change and they may not be in your life as much or if at all and that's where you have to say to yourself okay this is going to be a lonely road but the trust that i am just me being and i know this is a long one so my apologies but haven't walked through it the reality is are you more alone absolutely like the the circle of 20 friends that you had and 30 or 50 friends how many people i had now becomes three two or three and and as you get older obviously people pass away and people die or people move away or whatever it is whatever these circumstances so your circle becomes smaller and smaller i understand why people say just fuck friends and, and just be around family i get that but I think you're doing yourself a disservice by trying to appease everyone because it's your life at the end of the day. You're the one living this life. And if you were to look at it from a perspective of you are a good person, no matter what these quirks are or these thoughts that you have that don't align with somebody else's, if these thoughts don't align with someone else's and they're holding it against you, then that's not a person you want to be around. That's not a person because if they can't see how beautiful of a person you are, if they can't see how the great things you bring to the table as as a connection, whether it's friends, whether it's a partner, so on and so forth, if they can't see that, then it's not worth compromising your own self-happiness for that person because now that's become conditional. And I'm not saying that relationships aren't conditional in our lives. They are. But we should strive more towards being unconditional with our love to each other versus conditioned. Like I, and I think society, a lot of these circles are more tilted. If we were to have a meter and on one end you were to have conditional and the other end you were to have unconditional, most people, the needle moves more towards the conditional way more towards conditional like i'll be your friend if you do these things i'll be your lover if you do these things whereas with me is yeah i have some hard lines but man i give you a lot of leeway way more than you know there's certain things i'm not going to even worry about because i love you i want to love you as as much as unconditionally as possible as a person as a friend and i see my daughter going through that like that's the personality she has. So I've been just instilling in her like to protect that energy and to look for people that match that. 
look for people that are making the same effort as you are because then that allows you and not only that that are giving the same effort as far as holding on that that bond of trust but also accepting you for who you are like you're not having to adjust who you are as a person because god forbid you are acting out the way you are that they're gonna have a problem with it that's not how we should be living our lives don't get me wrong when we're in certain environments we're at a concert we're at a game we're at work yes let's act professional when we're at a dinner table yes let's have some manners when we're in a group function yes but when we are around our closest people the people that we love i'm always going to encourage and advocate for you to be your true self and and hoping that the other person can be self-aware that it is their insecurities it is their lack of uh, handling uh, lack of accepting other viewpoints and knowing that this person no matter how different they are from you that they're still there with you they still love you they're still going to be it doesn't make them any different as far as what the bond and that connection is it, it's just the things that they say you just don't agree with it, it's like finding out that your friend is not really a conservative they're a liberal and they're just saying conservative things because you know they just want to appease you but they're really a liberal does that make them a bad person no it doesn't make them a bad person it's just that they just have a different viewpoint and they loved you enough to try to not get you triggered but then but if you're able to step away and say you know what even though i don't agree with those politics i still can love you i still can care for you when, when you're stuck in a rut i'll be there for you just like i know if i was in a car accident you'd be there for me and if we thought along those lines if we really lived our lives in that way and not worried about whether our family judges us if we're not in line with the views that they want us to live by right it, it's like if they're not accepting of that if your friends are are not happy that you're not conforming to how they want you to be and being on demand for them or if you have a relationship where you have to be a certain way or else i mean that's do you call that living do you call that i i don't i don't think so at all i think it's it's kind of like the that uh movie fucking uh I'll put it on here. I don't think you ought to be doing this to yourself, Andy. This is just shitty pipe dreams. I mean, Mexico is way the hell down there, and you're in here, and that's the way it is. Yeah, right. That's the way it is. It's down there, and I'm in here. I guess it comes down to a simple choice, really. Get busy living, or get busy dying.